تقييم 10 8 6 4 2 0 احنا طلعنا كده دكتور محمد Welcome to the live for the second time, this time in English. So can you hear me very well now? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. Thank you for, okay. for the presentation. We will wait for like five minutes till people are gathering. Okay. I then, will... we can, then we can proceed. Okay, I will go to Hayat. Yes. You can go to Hayat Dental Education and then okay. you can click watch part. We have five, five people. And number are increasing, so uh, we are waiting. I will send you the link within uh, two minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. So how was the last life? Uh, actually, it is an experience. Okay. Uh, I feel it was good. Uh, Great. I get a lot of questions. I tried to answer all on your page on Hayat. Dental education. Great, uh, great. As we are going to make almost the same lecture, but it will be in English. So maybe people who are having questions from the last uh, webinar, they can ask them now. They can join us today, and they can and they can answer their questions because we yeah. had many requests about uh, 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 doing the lecture in English. So today we will be in English. Yeah. Okay. So, Dr. Mohammed, would you please tell me what you are doing these days in Corona time? Uh, actually, what I'm doing, I'm trying to write uh, a small atlas, a small book about the bone graft. Okay. Uh, trying to fill my time with that. Um, uh, and preparing lectures and preparing myself. What I'm not doing is not moving a lot, not making sports. Which is not good. So, do you do you, ex <laughs> do you expect to stay? Do you expect to stay till till when? Actually, they uh, locked down the country till 15th of April, but they are talking that they will will uh, keep us more till May. Till May. Yeah, they say okay. they are saying that we stay till May. Then. Okay. So, how you will manage if you will stay in uh, till May? Actually, the problem is the clinic will will have some problems. Uh, okay. We are we are making duty. Uh, okay. The 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 national uh, dental syndicate is is making us to go to duties. They are organizing everything. Uh, I did mine uh, last week. It was Saturday. So, so uh, what do you mean by duty? I have to be in my clinic to receive only emergency. And okay. it's not uh, like people come to my clinic and open the door and no, no, they call they call a central and the central will ask them questions to, to decide if it's a real emergency or not. If it is a real emergency, they give me the phone number of the patient and I call him, tell him, give him a call to come to my clinic. And I have to respect one hour delay between each patient. We don't, we're not allowed to have two patients in the uh, waiting room. So it's really uh, like uh, uh, there's a lot of rules to respect. Okay, I got your point. Hmm. So, so uh, hello. Hello, I'm hearing you. I'm waiting you. Yes. So, Doctor Mohammed. Uh, so, are you optimistic about the coming days? Uh, actually, it will end as yes, everything sure. will end and we will we'll go back to our normal life. Uh, as I told you in Arabic, I have my special vision that everybody will uh, will get the coronavirus almost. The question is, it's not the question, uh, are we going to get it or not? It, the question is when we are going to get it. Uh, okay. And what we need to make is to flatten the curve in order to get it as late as possible. At the moment the, where the hope hospitals can uh, receive us. Uh, so this is why we have to stay home. We have to, to protect ourselves in order to, to delay the thing, to give the chance to the hospital to be able to treat to treat us and to treat all other, uh, other people. Great, so, and financially, how you will manage the next days? Actually, we have, uh, we have some, 
promises anyway from the government that we will get some help. Okay. Uh, but, but till now, if you compare uh, from the financial view, the uh, March of, 19, uh, of uh, uh, 2019 and March, what we did in March, the, the first uh, 20, uh, 12 uh, days from March before uh, the mm -hmm. uh, lockout, we lost already 30% of our total income. Which okay, is okay. This is uh, a big number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wish uh, uh, all uh, the coming days will be uh, much lighter. Yeah. I, I, I think what, what they are talking about the um, uh, economics is that we will have problems, economic issues, uh, during uh, the optimistic way, optimistic view during at least six months. Okay. Is, yeah, this is the, the most uh, optimistic uh, opinion, and they are telling us that this is the opinion that will may uh, happen. The scenario: uh, six months, it will be hard, and then everything will go as as before. We wish, we wish, and hope. Yeah, but as I told you, also what I believe, it's time to go for e-learning after the Corona crisis. Every e-learning, everything, distance. It will make it booming, it and even universities yes. will make things like that. Yes, yes, yes. it will work. It will work fast. So, yeah. Doctor Mohab, tell me, when when did you start to think about being an implantologist? Uh, it's in two thousand and four, actually. Oh, that's a long time and, ago. Yeah, and it was like uh, uh, I was I opened my clinic, and I was looking. What I want to do, what I want to do. Uh, there is a book, and I I saw a, a like an advertisement to learn <coughs> the uh, implant in three days. Okay. Oh, in three days. It was made by a company Stroman in France. Yeah. So uh -huh. I went there. Uh -huh. I went there. I, I, I paid money. I learned some some uh, something about the implants. And since then, each year I finish a diploma, I register another diploma. I finish a diploma, I register another diploma. And uh, until I think it's the, the last one, I took it in, in 2012, something like that. And then okay. I, I, I stopped going diploma, but I go always courses to learn a little bit, to learn tricks and things. We always learning. Okay, so you would think the first three days for you in the, in the implant world was enough? It was not start? enough. It was not enough. Uh, I will I will tell you a, a story uh, that makes me respect this company. Not it's a, it was the dealer of Stroman actually, but it's not Stroman. Uh, because I started, I ordered at the, at the end of the course. They gave us ten implants. When okay. I went home, ten yeah. When I went home, I said, "Oh, what I did? Ten implants? How how I'm going to place these implants? How I'm going to do?" And then I placed them and I ordered another 10 and I ordered another 10 at the 30 implant. I received a call from, from the company. Okay. Telling me, telling me, look, you ordered a lot of implants. So I will not able to, to give you more. It's only 30. Yeah? <laughs> We're not able to give you more. We want to send a doctor to see if you are placing them correctly. Otherwise, we stop selling you. Yes. And they sent the doctor, he, see, he saw my radios and everything, and then said, okay, we don't want to send it. Okay. I, I, I think that this is a great thing. You know, Brandon. They gave you a discount on this or not? Uh, at the end, I got the 20% discount. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Brandmark, when he started implants, he never sell implants to, 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 uh, to a doctor unless the doctor follow a course with Brandmark. Yes, that, that was. Actually, I think th this should be the rule. If uh, yeah. the company are not sure the dentist is not well educated to place implant, to not sell the implant to them. Otherwise, it will yeah. be like. Uh, and this uh, is this is the politic also followed by Dr. Dedrich Henry. He is what he was with you yesterday. Uh -huh. Before placing his implants, his plates, you have to go to follow the course with him. Otherwise, you will not yes. be able to buy exactly. his implants. Exactly. This is true. So, uh, Dr. Mohammed, what you are preparing for us today? Actually, it will be the same lecture that I did yesterday about the bone grafts, yet two days ago about the bone grafts. 
Uh, you know, preparing the lecture, it's not like this. It it's takes not a lot easy. of time, a lot of yes, yes, lot lot of time effort. effort. Yeah. So it will be the same, but I will make it in English for the English talking people because we did it in, only in, in Arabic. All right. So would you please surprise us with the lecture? I hope so. <laughs> but please feel free also if you would like to to stop me to any for any questions. It's not a problem. Let let us make it like uh, you know a dialogue, not not really a lecture. Okay. okay it will be more more life. Okay. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting the lecture. Okay. I want to share my screen. Okay. Here. Okay, and here we are. Are you seeing it? Yes, clear, Kristen. Good. I like to choose this this uh, uh, this image because here I don't know what's the situation actually in Egypt, but here a lot of people are afraid and having uh, uh, about uh, about our future and, and everything. So I. I believe that this picture uh, is like like hope for the for the for the future that everything will be will be fine everything will be okay don't don't worry about that yes hopefully hopefully it will yeah so uh, what I wanted to, to to talk about is about bone grafts everybody of us like to have some some cases straightforward cases like this case it's easy you have a very very large uh, uh, crest and you, where you can place your implant. If so easily, no bone graft needed, and I think you just open the flap, you raise the flap, and you place your implant. Uh, just easy in uh, in the cingulum, and everything will, will go fine. Uh, here I choose the root implant, as you as you noticed, I think. So here, two months later, when, when I make, I am was shaping the the uh, the papilla, the, the soft tissue. Uh, and here, when we take the, imp the impression, everything is going fine. Just I want to uh, to, to uh, show you something here. You know, there's a distance between the gum, the gingiva, and uh, the the transfer. Uh, do not take an impression like this because if you take a fashion immediately like the, like this, the putty uh, will press on the uh, soft tissue. Will bend it and you will lose this information you cannot give this information to your technician so you will end by a uh, uh, by a crown that having not the same diameter of the uh, uh, adjacent crown so you have to fix this space before you fix it with flow composite and then take the impression send it to go to the, your prosthetics and then you have crown having the same uh, convexity and then you see the soft tissue is good this is a straightforward case. This is, but unfortunately, this is not uh, our daily work. It's only maybe, let us say, five percent of our work. Our work is the, the, the easiest one is uh, when we have an extraction, immediate implantation, uh, like this case. We make extraction for these three molars. We make place an implant implants here. We 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 put our graft here. We will talk about this graft. Then. We, we prepare our soft tissue and we place our crowns. Another one, here we make an extraction with implantation, but without putting any graft. Actually, what I do always, I put the graft when I make an extraction with implantation, and this is what I advise, especially in the anterior region in the in the, in the maxilla, because, the, because there will be, for, uh, for sure, there will be, we will have some uh, bone resorption of the buccal plate, Especially if the buccal plate is, is having only one millimeter of thickness, this buccal plate is made only of the bundle bone, and the bundle bone will resorb whatever we do. So we have to change two choices: either we extract, we wait six weeks, then we place our implants, and we make our graft. Because at, at, after six weeks, the bundle bone will be completely resorbed, and there will be no surprises. Or we place our implant and we graft, even if there is a gap. A gap uh, uh, jumping distance, which is less than two millimeters, we graft it all, always uh, in the anterior zone. Unless you have four or five millimeters of, uh, which is, uh, I never saw that in my work, but unless you have four or five millimeters of uh, bone thickness, the buckle plate, this way you don't need to graft because 
this bone is not only made of, of, of bundle bone. You have to know that the thickness of the bundle bone is one millimeter. So in this case, in the molar, uh, you can not making any graft. I place my implant, and you see around the implant we have the, the root. Uh, two months later, we made this, the, the crown uh, screwed and cemented. In the same time, cemented outside of the mouth uh, and screwed in the mouth. And here we have the shape at the implant and the integrum. And you know, you can notice how the bone is covering uh, even the implant uh, on the top. When I was uh, studying in, uh, in, in, uh, in Bordeaux University and in New York and NY, uh, NYU, uh, I placed an implant in this position and I was very happy with that because I was, for me, I was like a champion. You know, I placed my implant and I didn't touch the, the, the teeth uh, next, uh, next. And I was happy with that. You know, I, was, I, think I thought that I was very, very, very strong guy. Uh, I showed it to my teacher, and teacher, he like, likes, like he hits me, told me, look, my guy, if you don't know how to make a sinus lift or bone graft, just go and learn it, but never place an implant in this position. Yes, he's right, he's right. Yeah. So uh, that makes me thinking different in the, the, since that way, and I said, okay, I have to learn how to make our bone graft. What, what, if, what if you go tomorrow to your clinic and you have cases in this way? which is, as I said, it's like 80% of our work uh, placing implants with in, in, in zones with bone needed bone grafts. If you place your implant here, you are going to have long implant, long crown, bad aesthetic. Here, if you make your extraction without any bone graft, you will get a depression here and you will end by uh, having a more complicated case to, to treat at the end. So we need to make graft, but what we have in this in the in the market as grafts, we have these four uh, four types. We have the autograft, the allograft, the xenograft, and the alloplast. The autograft is so is uh, the when it is from the same patient, we take it from the same patient to graft it. This one is osseoinductor. This is the only one which is osseoinductive. All others are not. It is also conductive also. It, it acts like scuffle for the for the cells to go uh, and to and to, to make the graft. It, it maintains the space. It's not so easy to take out. This is why I put only two pluses in the facility. It makes morbidity, yes, because you need to open a new surgical site to harvest this bone. And it's limited in the quantity. You cannot have kilos or tons or whatever. It's limited in the quantity. The allograft, it's from another patient. We have two types of allograft. We have the FDBA and the DFDBA, the decalcified one. Uh, some studies are saying that the allograft, it may be also inductive. But actually, it's, uh, it depends on the uh, harvesting and, and the treatment of these particles. It, it may have some induction. But if it has some induction power, it has in the second hand uh, some, um, some problems. It makes inflammatory reaction. And we will see. Uh, it is also conductive also. Uh, it, is, it is not easy to, to have because here in France, we, it's very complicated to get the allograft. I don't know in other countries you can buy some bottles. I saw it's easy. Uh, here it's not not so easy to get it. There's no morbidity for sure, and we have quantity, a lot of quantity. The xenograft and the alloplast, these both are not osseoinductive. The xenograft is the animal one, like uh, bovine, like uh, porcine, like uh, equine. The OCU conductive, uh, they are OCU conductive both. Uh, they are easy because you only have to buy. There's no morbidity and we have quantity as we as we need. Let us talk about the autograph. The autograph is the gold standard one. Okay, that's everybody we know. There's no problem of osteocompatibility, no problem for cross infections. So it's 
the gold standard because it contains uh, uh, cells and it contains hormones like uh, uh, TGF beta and the and, and, and growth factors uh, like the MP2. Okay, but what is interesting here is this article. But tell us this article. This article tell us that the quantity of growth factors in the bone in the uh, autograph it depends on the way of harvesting this bone so if you harvest this bone like a blood you will not do not get as cell as as uh, growth factors as if you scrape it the scraper is the best way to get these growth factors actually the the, the cortical bone it's cortical there is not a lot of cells inside it's not like the cancerous bone. The cancerous bone contains a lot much more cells, but the cortical bone do not con contains a lot of cells. But between in the in the extra extracellular matrix, there is a lot of uh, growth factors. We can liberate the, these growth factors by scraping this bone. When we take these chips, I scrap it. This is very important and keep it in mind for the rest of the lecture. As we said, the allograft. We have the FDBA and the DFDBA. The FDBA is the one which is not demineralized, that contains calcium. The FDBA is demineralized, it does not contain calcium. Why we took the calcium outside? It's in purpose, actually, because we are thinking that this calcium is, is, is uh, delaying and, and, and stopping the DMPs to, to be spread in the, in the graft. So if we demineralize it, we can have some BMP. This is why we, when we talk about the osseoinductive power of the allograft, it concerns only the DFDBA, do not concern the FDBA, okay? And even in the DFDBA, it's not all the DFDBA that can be osseoinductive. It depends on the age of the patient donor, because if you have patients that are old, we have less BMPs. Uh, it depends on the treatment of the bone graft and the treatment of the extraction. Uh, it, it goes off through frozen uh, things. It, 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 it goes to so chemical things to clean it. So we lose a lot of this this uh, osteoinductive powers. So the FDBA, as it is, it contains calcium. When we put in the on the graft on the zone and we make the radio. We can see it on the radios. It allows us to make a control of our graft. While the DFDBA, it's almost radiolicent. It's not easy to see it. Uh, the FDBA, it, it maintains the space more, better than the DFDBA. Why? Because the DFDBA would resolve uh, fastly, fast and easily, more easy, easy than the FDBA. So this, this leads us to a shrinkage. So if you use only the DFDBA and you want to like goes for five or six millimeters vertical augmentation, let us say, uh, you will end by three millimeters because of this resorption that that takes the place and you will not have uh, you not uh, keep this space and maintain it to have this bone. Uh, so and and we we talk about the OCU conductivity. The FDBA is only OCU conductive. Thus, the DFDBA may be also uh, inducted. But as I said here in this article, uh, it, there is the ability to induce the bone, not all, some of them, but those that can induce bone formation, they have some, uh, they, they may produce some antigens, some re inflammatory reaction that may dest destroy your graft also at the same time. The xenograft, the xenograft comes from, from animals. As I said, it's from the uh, from cows. And the, the one that is the most studied one is the virus from cows, from animals. Now we classified it as a non resolvable material. Before, before that, it was classified in uh, yeah, yeah, it is resolvable, but it's late. It takes 20 years or 25 years. Now it's classified as non-resolvable material. So it maintains the volume. This is important that to maintain the volume because when you want to make bone graft, you need to have 
this space maintainer. If you do not maintain the space, you will not have any graph. You will not succeed in your graph. You have to make the volume. You have to get the stability, and you have to get the closure. Otherwise, you will not get the graph. So it's only also you conducted. It's not also you conducted the 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 this bovine one and the alloplast. This is what actually I use in maximum my my practice with with the autograph. Yes, uh, this is what, what we I, need to hear. What what do you do in your practice, Dr. Muhammad? Yeah, in my practice, I'm I'm mixing this the the the, the uh, alloplast with the uh, with the autograph with the human one with the chips okay. chips the human. One. Uh, why? Because first of all, the, the alloplast is free of all biological sources. So there is no cross infection, uh, no risk of uh, any, any infection, or any, any, any things like a CrossFit Jacob or, or, or any things like that, any disease. Uh, another thing which is important is for the religious and cultural beliefs. Some people do not like to have cows in their, in their mouth, and uh, others do not like to have some parts of humans or anything. So the synthetic is free of any cultural or, or religious belief. So it's, it's for, for us here, it's, 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 it's important. And we know that the calcium uh, may uh, have effect to, in, to, to promote the, the action of the osteoblast. Uh, that will help uh, in the, it's not an inductor yet, it's only conductive, but it promotes the action of osteoblast. Why? The induction actually it will induce the transformation of cells to an, to, from, from let us say from pre-osteoblast to osteoblast or from 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 uh, um, cells not 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 mature to mature, to mature the cells. Why the uh, the conductive do not have any any of these effects? The osteo the 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 uh, calcium will only promote the action of existing osteoblast, okay? It will not induce okay. the formation of osteoblast. But now, uh, at the end of the day, we have, we have now the research is going forward, and we, we saw, uh, we, we are, uh, there's a product that will come uh, nearly in the market, which is a uh -huh. synthetic one, and okay. it, is, it is inductive. It can have an osteoinduction power. Uh, they place it in the in the muscles, and they got bone in the muscles. This is very interesting product that I see in the future. And this is okay. published in 2016 uh, by Skirwan, Skirwan uh, and and Boozer, Boozer and you know big big names. But uh, this part, this art, this product is not not yet in the market. I put this this to show you some something what we did in the past, uh, it likes like about uh, seven years ago. What we used to do is to uh, print because we wanted to at, at that time. What we was thinking is the, the gold standard, the good one, is to take blocks from the patient and to screw these blocks and to to make these crack. The problem was was what was to uh, handle these blocks to to cut them to put them. To shape them, the, the block should, should have an intimate contact with the graph, with the with the site. Uh, you don't have any to, to have any any space between them, so you should really work with this graph to really slowly and try it. And it takes a lot of time to to, to adjust the graph. Uh, so uh, what we did in the past is we take a a, a radio a stick cone beam for the patient. At that time, that the, the cone beam it was really in the beginning. We make we make scanners. And uh, we'll take impression, we send it to the technician. He will print us a model of the okay. different patient. We, we, we take the model, we put it in the autoclave, we sterilize the model. Then we take it out before the surgery and we start adjusting, adjusting our uh, autograph, allograft block or uh, synthetic block outside of the mouth of the patient before the, starting the surgery. We just okay. adjust it. And then when we start the surgery, only what, what you have to do is to open, to make it, to place the block and to screw it. But nowadays, what we are, what they can do now is to make uh, the 3D printing of your block, not, to, okay. not printing the model and you will adjust the block, no, they will print for you the block. But the block is printed only 
in a, a synthetic bone or alloplast bone. So if you want to, to shape or to work with the uh, allo, allo, allograft blocks, this can be a way to uh, make it easier for you. So shall we use block or particulate bone? Actually, uh, the old, old time with holy technique, when we take the, the corticoconsulus block together, and we use them, we fix them, we get a lot of failures. It was not working. Why? Because what, what, is, uh, what works is the particles. What makes the graft is the particles, it's not the blood. The particles are much, much easy to, 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 to handle because you can give it the shape that you like. You can adjust it easily to the, to the sides, while block you need to, 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 to work. And the irrigation, the vessels, the vessels can go easily and fastly between the right, blocks yes. to work with them. So with those who work with blocks and those who work with the, you know, the when we take this block and we splint it and we make it now, now because we change the, the, the concept. The concept is not at the same as before. We take uh, cortical and, and cancerous bone and we fix them together. It's not, not like that anymore. Now we take the block, we cut it, we make it, we make it, we shape it as thin as possible. We need only the cortical. We fix the cortical block here in order to hold for us the the particles. The, this this block will be like only holding these particles, not have any anything to do with the graft. Huh? It's only to hold these particles that you are going to put inside. So you have you have you have the defect. You put your block okay. this way, and you fill this space by these part by the, the particles. At the end, four months later, when you open, you can see this cortical block is still here. It's not resolved. You have bone, yes, for sure, you have bone. But this this particle this block is still here. It's not resolved, and it will resolve later. It's whitish. It's it's necrotic. It's whitish, and it will resolve later, three or four years later. So if you imagine if you place your implants and your implants were in contact with this plate, it will resolve. So uh, what is making the graph actually? What is making the success of the graph? It is when you cut this this particle, this uh, block, and you put it, then you scrap the other block. You take these scrapes, this this particles as we said, and you are scraping it. So you take them with this growth factors. You put it here. And you will get both. So for me, it's much more easier to go with particles than to go with blocks with screws. You have to shape them, you have to cut them, you have to be artistic and to, to screw this. This would take you like let us say one hour to, to, to make this thing while with the with the very when you do, long you, time you, open you lab. exactly. Okay, so let us go and so the let us ask the question, uh, uh, can we make bone augmentation, vertical augmentation, and, and horizontal augmentation with the GBR? Yes, we can. We can do it. A lot of articles is, to, is talking about that. 97% of, of uh, success in uh, GBR for bone augmentation. So it's, uh, we, can, we can go for the bone augmentation in GBR. OK, the major problem with, that we have in GBR is, is actually we have a lot of problems, for sure. In, 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 any procedures of bone graft, and even in simple implant placement, you place sometimes an implant, and you don't know for why it, it failed. It goes out. It makes a fibro integration. You don't know why. Sometimes you know. Sometimes you don't know. Okay, it's the same in in, in bone graft. We have some something sometimes uh, failures and complications. But let us let us talk about the complications that that is the always we all, all uh, always complication. It's the exposure of the membrane because what who talk about gbr talks about membranes you have to use membranes. Okay. the most uh, common complication is the is the uh, exposure of the membrane but this uh, complication it's about 12 percent 12 percent complication of exposure of the membrane based on the uh, tracy in, in uh, who, who made a study about that so this is not the major this is not in fact a big problem uh, that this is a problem that we can handle if we have some exposure. So when, when, once we have this problem, uh, a patient comes to your clinic and have this problem, you have two two ways to solve this problem. Either you, you take a block, you put a block on the back, the buckle side, another block in the 
uh, on the plate, let us say, in the uh, lingual side or palatal side, and you fill between them these particles, then you close. This can be a solution that would take you, let us say, uh, one hour, one hour thirty. Or another solution is that you harvest this particles. Actually, you can use synthetic allograph or, or auto, it's, it's up to you. But if you want to have real bone, just open the, open the, the uh, uh, ramus, scrape bone from there, scrape, 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 and put the, put, prepare them at, as NPM and put them here. Then, a few months later, you will get the solution, this, this uh, so a solution. You will have a new ridge and you didn't place any blocks, you didn't place any screws that takes you a lot of time to do this. The same patient here, I used synthetic bone because I use actually 50% synthetic bone, 50% of, of uh, autograft. But this patient, it's only synthetic bone, you didn't, didn't mix it with, with, uh, with autograft, this patient. Uh, I extracted the teeth, I placed my implant, and I put my graft here. I took my uh, stability from uh, the apex. Are you seeing my mouse moving or not? Ahmed? Yes, Dr. Muhammad, I can see it. Your mouse is, is moving. Okay, great. Great. So uh, I took my impression, I took my, I placed my implant, I put my graft, and here's the result two months later. I open always at two months. We started this way and we ended like that. But I open always at two months, but I'm not telling you to go and open at two months to make your entry at two months. It's sometimes it's, it's short and you uh, you find sometimes uh, sometimes problems. But uh, how, many, how many times, Dr. Mohammed, did you open after two months and find just it's uh, still soft? Uh, two months here is it's, it's, it's soft at the moment. But okay. Then, the implant is also integrated. Why? Because the implant, I you, you see where I stabilize my implant by the native bone uh -huh. here. Okay. So I don't have any problem with that. With the this is bone. Okay. Off, and I will keep it remodeling by by itself. I will not touch it. Okay. okay. So this, this is this is soft. At two months, this is soft. You have to wait six months to get it harder. So can we make vertical augmentation with? With only with particles, the problem with particles is the stability and to maintain the space. Uh, we have to we have to, to to if you want to to succeed your graph, you have to make something stable, do not move, and you have to maintain the space. If there is no space, there is no bone. You have to leave this space empty in order to to cells uh, to leave a time for bone but bone cells to go there and to uh, produce their bone. So this case, you can solve it with blocks for sure, but you can solve it much easier with, with particles. And you get this, this image, which is wonderful image after six months. OK, what you are going to tell me that here that the, the patient does have no more vestibular. Yes, there's no more vestibular, but it's not because of, of particles. Anyway, even if you are going to make, to make blocks, you are going to destroy this vestibule in order to close because it's almost seven millimeters high you need to close so that there's no vestibule anymore but you are going to make your second stage because second surgery to, to recreate this vestibule uh, and to, to create the keratized tissue and this we cannot talk about all these steps and all these surgeries in, in only uh, 40 or 50 minutes of, of lecture uh, this lecture actually this this is a course that may take one or two days if you oh, want yeah. and and in real life it took months to learn yeah yeah actually actually uh if some some somebody is interested he can come to my clinic but i do not to see more than two person in times and uh, one time because uh if we are more than two uh we, we lost you can lose the advantage to 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 learn uh, really if we are two we it's better to to, to learn than uh, than than a group high group so another case, another patient. Uh, if you can see the the thickness of the bone here in this patient, we don't have any any thickness and any height of the bone. See the, okay. the defect that you have; it's a huge defect. Yes. Look, look at the at the at the uh, uh, this this uh, view. There is no bone, almost no bone. 
Uh, this case, I did it with two guys, one, one who came to my clinic from uh, Burkina Faso, and another came from um, uh, South Africa to, 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 to see, and they wanted to see some, some, something to do. And I planned this case. It was really amazing. Uh, and then this is when we placed our our uh, membrane. As I, as who say, uh, who says uh, GBR says membranes. We cannot do GBR without membranes, especially vertical augmentation. We need to take membranes with uh, uh, reinforced with titanium. And in the same time, I prepare my bone graft as MPM. Okay. Here, here I got a mixture between 50% of the uh, allograft, 50% of uh, uh, xeno, uh, no, allograft, uh, alloplast. So synthetic and uh, from the patient. 50%, 50%, okay? Okay. So just to just prepare, shape it, you need, you, you only need to put it and then push it. Don't do anything. You just push this, this graft. And this is the result six months later. You can see the difference between before and 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 after you see the thickness that we that we obtain that's amazing that it's amazing you can place in your implants here okay we can have some some graphs that are not uh, uh resolved yet that's not not a problem this this graph we can take it out and place our implants easily uh another case extraction of implantation as i said i always graph the 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 the, uh, the socket and always graph uh, especially in the anterior side. This patient was losing here this uh, this bone. We placed our implant our, and our graft at the same time. Two months later, we cannot see our our uh, implants. We know that they are they are here and they are covered by the bone. Then we open. We only make our incision. We open and we place our temporary bridge, keeping this gum outside. Just pushing it here where, when we are, we are placing the bridge. This is a temporary bridge. We just push this, this gum in the vestibular. And at the end, when before taking the impression, you can see how we shape this gum. And this is the uh, prosthetic, and this is the final result. It's not an let us say an amazing result, but I'm I'm a little it's bit very acceptable. With very yeah, acceptable. Yeah, I, I'm proud with this papilla, you know. Uh, it's not easy to manage to have papilla between uh, uh, teeth. There's no teeth there. There's no implants here. And even though you have this papilla, it's not, not, not so have, easy. We have a big issue with, with papilla, you know. Papilla is, yeah, yeah. is not feeling feel well with us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another case of extraction, uh, when I, this case, I, I made my extraction. I, I, I filled it, the, uh, the, a socket with the graft, and I put my crown and I fixed my crown with composite to the adjacent teeth. I didn't place my implant yet. I only shaped my papilla here. And this is the day when I wanted to place my implant. I took out my prosthetics and placed my implant. This is two months later, and this is the final result. The papilla actually was shaped before placing the crown. So let us take about, talk about membranes a little bit. Uh, the membranes, uh, we have two types of membranes, the non-resolvable membranes and the resolvable membranes. For me, the best, the, the best membranes are the non-resolvable membranes. This is what I prefer. Okay. Okay? The non-resolvable membranes, we have the PTFE membranes, which is the, the, the first membrane that we was in the market. Uh, the PTFE, you have two types of, of PTFE membrane. We have the E E PTFE here and the D PTFE. I do not use the E PTFE, the stretch, the stretch one, because uh, it, you can make you can have some problems if you have an exposure. Uh, you know, Fatek and uh, Fatek in 2009, he was talking about infections uh, on PTFE membranes uh, because of, of exposure. The DP at PTFE, it supports better if you have some exposure of the membrane, you can keep it, that you will not get any infection. I have it several times, and several times I, I tell the patient to come to my clinic every two days to check it, and everything was fine. And then maybe I lost some, some of my height of, because 
of this exposure, some of, of my height, maybe maybe 0.5 or a millimeter, but this you can handle it in the second stage surgery. It's not, not, not a big deal. Okay. The titanium mesh, I do not classify this mesh as a membrane. Uh, they it was classified as membranes. They uh, okay, I will I, I accept this like that. But for me, it's titanium mesh. It's not a titanium mesh because really, really, it's 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 a lot of penetrations and uh, a very complex surgery to take it out. I do not advise using this. Maybe some some of you you who are using it, uh, it works with his hand. Anyway, it does not work with my hands. I do not work with titanium mesh anymore. The reservoir membranes, you have several types of reservoir membrane, the native collagen membrane, the cross-linked membrane, and the synthetic membrane. The synthetic membrane, uh, the, the, the old one uh, membranes was uh, making some inflammatory reaction uh, based on, on Schwartz and to 2008, you noticed a lot of, of inflammatory reaction around these synthetic membranes. So, uh, but now the PGA membrane, the synthetic one, the PGA, uh, based on, on Urban, who, who compared these membranes to the, to the uh, native collagen membranes, he found that they got the same results of bone, uh, but for him, the native membrane collagen is, is easier to use. Why is it easier to use? Because it's stretchable. He can stretch it, so can, he can pack his bone and he stretch. He pack his bone and he stretch. So he get he will get a very high stability of this uh, of the, his bone graft. Why he need this stability for me? Uh, for sure, we need, we need the stability to, to make to have a graft to, to success in the graft. But why he need this to stretch? Because he's not using the NPM. If you use the NPM, you do not need to pack and to stretch to stabilize your graft because your graft is already stable. It's and very no, critical now to use the NPM. Yes, I can agree with you on this. Yeah, you, you, and you saw it. I mean, you, you are used to use it, as you see how, how it is yes. how it is stable it is. And then we we finish with the crosslink uh, membrane. These crosslink membranes are uh, why we make this crosslink is because we need to make to have membranes that result in more more the delay of resorption maybe longer. Uh, but the problem of this crosslink is that. Uh, or lake of vascularization, lake of irrigation. Uh, this is was documented by his watch in 2005. And, and uh, if you have an exposure of this membrane, of the cross-link, you may lose about 50% of your graft based on, on, on works of, of uh, Park in 2008. So here, I use only particles. We can use this graft to correct this uh, depression of the patient. We placed our implant. These are two root implants, 3.8, I think, uh, 10 millimeters. Uh, we put our membrane, collagen, we put NPM here, and we put our membrane. It's a collagen membrane, a synthetic one, PGA, and, and we uh, make our sutures by using the periosteum. Why we use the periosteum? Because the characteristic of the periosteum is what? The periosteum is elastic. So once you once you you, you pass through the, the periosteum, you are having something that is uh, uh, getting uh, uh, pulling pushing you uh, on, on the top. This is why you can see this this shape of the membrane like this because of the elasticity of the periosteum here. It is stabilizing my my uh, my graft. But anyway, it's not, not um, a must because I have my MPM here. So this is the result two months later. You can see how we correct this uh, depression easily. Uh, the patient is uh, having a very nice, nice contour of the bone here. So what is the MPM? The MPM is uh, a mixture between, uh, between the bone grafts or bone substitutes and and the fibrin network of the patient. I'm not talking about growth factors. Uh, this is another issue, and we can talk about them hours and hours. Uh, actually, I do not pretend there's growth factors on the MPM, and I don't uh, uh, work about these uh, growth factors. I only what I care about in the MPM is this stability, because these particles of of bonds. This is a bios or microscope, electronic microscope, is attached to the whole MPM by. Uh, this fibrin network. 
this fiber network really gives the stability for the whole APM and you can shape it, you can you can uh, cut it, you can crush it, you can do whatever you like on it. Uh, here in the video to prepare the NPM, we put we, did, we put tubes with red red head tubes. It's not the red head tubes. You use you use the white tubes. You have it in your store, Ahmed, I think. Yes, uh, yes, we have it. Yeah, it's very, very very great tubes actually. Exactly, About nine, nine millimeter and uh, with high vacuum. So exactly, the vacuum. And what is important is that these tubes do not contain anything. They, these tubes are plain. So what you are making for your patient is. Is completely no chemicals inside and nothing. Here on this cup, we added we added uh, uh, thrombin from animal uh, in order to to make this workshop. But anyway, in, in in the clinic, you take thrombin from the patient. You do not take it from the animals for sure. It's here here, here only for the workshop purpose. So we put here in this cup. We put our thrombin. We put bios. We put saline and the plasma. And we start mixing it. That's it. When you mix it, you get this uh, this bone. Um, this bone you can here we use synthetic. Uh, we use biolos. We can use synthetic. We can use holograft. We can use autograft, and to prepare them as MPM. The MPM is not a, a, a prepared already uh, ready made product. No, it's a product that you are going to prepare to you for your own. It's like you are making your cuisine. You use either Alloplast or, or Autograft or whatever, or a mixture between them. It's up to you what you are going to use. I, I prefer to use for, for sure the, the Autograft, uh, scraping them from the rhinos, which is uh, easy and secure procedure. You don't have uh, almost any risk. Uh, you have to take care about the incisions. Uh, but as I told you, if we are going to talk about the incisions, about the sutures, about the, the, the the material that we use as tutors, and we take two days, two days lecture. We cannot talk about all of that in 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 only only forty minutes. We have also the strategic strategic uh, incisions. It depends on the patient. If he uh, got graft before your your inter your uh, operation or not, uh, did anybody make any any grafting for him? Uh, this may condition your your incision. It's not the same if he get graft before or it's the first graft he's getting so so it's it's a lot of, of, of work to, uh, to, to say we cannot say everything in 40 minutes excuse me for that but I'm trying to give you the maximum of information okay so as you see here we can shape it we can cut it the the graft we can do uh, whatever we like we can suture this is my brain it's my brain I'm not using it anymore uh, for me it's useless uh, what is important for me is this MPM part. The membrane is not not really important for me. And you have this shape. You can it would resist the chewing forces, which is important for the graft, and it keeps for keep for you the stability of the graft. Let's take a look at this case, for example. This is one of my first cases in in MPM. It was really like uh, we were trying this product. Actually, the MPM, as I told you, it was uh, invented by by my teacher by error, uh, and it was developed then by by me and, and published and make uh, experiences on animals and and all these things and histology. So. It's it, the first publication about the MPM was in 2010. Uh, so we was I was practicing this MPM on this on this patient with this fenestration. I placed my M, my MPM. Two months later, uh, when the patient come to me, I try to open here. I cannot find my implants. I was oh, afraid. It's totally covered. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I said to myself, "Oh, what's happening? Where is the implants?" Uh, I asked the patient if she, if she lose some some of my uh, of the implants or anything happens. She said, "No, I, I, I'm not losing anything." So I made my radio. I wanted to see what's happening here. So I saw I saw that my implants were covered by my bone. And since then, every time every time I open and I do not see my implants, I see that I know that my implants are here somewhere. So I start digging to see where where are my implants. Uh, another case that I published. Uh, in the journal, in the scientific journal, 
uh, this patient, uh, I place my implant with this small, these are this very small defects, not, not big defects, but you can see, I will show you some bigger things. Uh, this is a small defect here. I place my implant, I put my APM, and I saw the patient one week later. Here's one week. Here's two months later. As I told you, I open always. I, I make my re-entry always at two months. And I cannot find my implant. So, okay, I know that the implant is here. Uh, I dig around it. I find it. I place my crown. And this is six months later. They crack. Thank you. And this is one year later. You can see the, bone, the stability of the bone that I obtained. Yeah. I put no resorption here, yeah, I put a lot because I, I I I think that I would get some resorption, but actually even the patient till now, so when she comes to me, she, she always she is not not feel, feeling little. Each time she touches, she told me, "Look, I have something here." Yeah, you have something here. Huh? It's bone. <laughs> it's bone. <laughs> the patient that come, the come for me having my page, I wanted to place implant by my, but my sensor was out. Uh, broken. Uh, this is a uh, freaky, uh, pretty tricky case. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a, a my edge case, uh, case, and the, the sensor was broken. I cannot see here the nerve, so I said, I no, I will not place the implant. Uh, I will make you for you only bone graft. I, all what I did is that I open and I plus placed my implant, my MPM, and and I sutured. That's it. I didn't do anything. Neither decortication and nothing. And here, if you see at seven seven millimeters. From the from the uh, premolar, the cut, the 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 uh, edge, knife edge will like like that, and this is at seven millimeters also from the premolar, and this is the uh, result. So this case, I love this case because it's really amazing. The patient came to me; she wanted to place an implant. Uh, we lose here a lot, uh, no, 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 no bone on the limbal side from the left and from the right. We go from the right no bone. I placed my implant, I, I did my graft at the same time, I, and I put a membrane, collagen membrane. Uh, and here you see the result six months later, left and right, and three years later, left and right. So the, res the result is, is really, really amazing, really comfortable. Another case when I, I made an extraction for the patient here, uh, extraction, immediate implantation, you can see there's no bone around the implant, I put my implant, I put my uh, screw, uh, this is screw, the GF0, you can, uh, this is covering screw, that uh, keeping a space between the implant and the screw. I painted the screw, I made the design and I painted it. Uh, this, uh, this allows the bone to grow, to grow on the top of the implant. And here you have the CT scan and you see the bone is growing on top of the implant, on the both sides, here and here. Uh, this case is sent to me by my technician. He told me, look, this patient uh, having some problems with this, this teeth, uh, endodontic problems, and she's not happy, she's going to get married. Please, can you solve this problem? Uh, I said, okay, we don't have any solution about uh, then, then extract and place an implant. Uh, but you can see the dimension of the, the teeth here, the crown is larger than the dimension here. Uh, I have two choices. Either I will work prosthetically on this crown also, but I do not like this thing. Uh, a healthy teeth, I do not touch it. Uh, for me, a dentist, when he touches a teeth, he, he is uh, uh, damaging it. So I prefer to not touch the teeth. Uh, I start my surgery, uh, raising the flap. The cure, this cure is very amazing for to raise this flap, flap to, cut, to cut all the fibers to raise the flap. Uh, I I place my implant and I put my particulate graft here. Uh, I started putting my, my particulate graft in the uh, in the in the uh, uh, fenestration side. Uh, here I didn't prepare an MPM because I was uh, out of tubes. Uh, but each time I have a graft, uh, I want to do a graft. I place I use an MPM. I never make a graft without MPM. Unless I'm, I'm out of tubes or, or something wrong that happened, but actually always, always preparing the MPM. It makes it much more easier and much stable, so you can do it fastly and easily. So <clears throat> I cover my implant. 
with, with this graph. And then we make the sutures. I always like to put bone, bone graft on the top of my implants also. Uh, I love I, I, I love to have my bone on the top of the implant. This protects more my implant and protects more my, uh, and for the long run, my soft tissue. Because what is supporting this soft tissue is what is the bone. It's not the implant or nothing else. So if you don't have bone, you don't have good soft tissue. You can't do this. And this is the final result of the, of the crown. Let me talk to you about this screw that I developed, and I will finish with that. Um, actually, when we place our, our implant and we cover the implant by the screw, the screw is touching the platform of the implant. There is no space for the bone to grow here between the, the screw and the implant. The idea is to create a space here to allow this bone to grow on the top of the implant. Why we want to do that? Because actually, uh, the, the, this this uh, tissue, soft tissue, the role of this soft tissue is to protect the bone. This soft, this the bone and this soft tissue is perforated by the teeth. So this teeth is going, this soft tissue is making a seal around the teeth to protect this bone. This seal is made by these fibers, the, the, the vertical fibers, the sharp, sharpest fiber. And this and this soft tissue is getting irrigation and vascularization from the ligaments and from the connective tissue and from the perio okay. and from the periosteum also. So uh, if, if we compare the, this ligament, uh, this this connection between implants and, and, and teeth, you can see that the, the 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 ligament, the fibers are going perpendicular from the soft tissue to the to the teeth. While when we have implants, they are going parallel to the implants and not to the teeth. There is no attachment between the implant and the, and the soft tissue. We have attachment between the, the, the soft tissue and the teeth. So the idea is to get this bone up to here in order to increase this attachment because the attachment is only on the bone in implant uh, conditions. And the irrigation is coming also from, as, as here we are losing we are having this irrigation uh, around the teeth, but we are not having it around the, around the implant. So only the irrigation around the implant is coming from the connective tissue and from the periosteum. So the, the, to have more irrigation here, more resistance and more thickness of bone, of, of soft tissue, we have to have this, this bone coming up here, make, increasing this irrigation to this region and increasing the defense of this region. So this is why we developed this, this uh, this screw. Anyway, this, this is why we developed this screw. This, when we place our implant, we place our implant one millimeter under the bone, and this screw is having a space here to one, uh, one millimeter. That is arriving to the top of the bone. Okay. When we arrive at the top of the bone, and it's having the same diameter of your uh, implant width. So it, when you screw it, this implant the screw is touching the bone here and touching the bone here. And here, this part is empty. Uh, what we know is that the migration of soft tissue is faster than the migration of, of uh, cells, of, of bone cells. But since you have, you are touching here and here, you are, you are stopping the migration of soft tissue. You are not uh, allowing this soft tissue to go, the, to go this way. Actually, uh, the, with the body, what we want to do is to fill the gap. The body don't, don't like to have any, any space. They want to, to fill this space, to close it. So to close this space, you have two choices. Either they close it by, by the soft tissue or by the bone. He preferred to close it by the thing that goes f as fast as possible, though. so he preferred to close it by, by the soft tissue. But since you put this screw, you are not allowing the soft tissue to migrate. So it, you are not giving the choice to the body. The only choice that he has is to close by this bone. So you will have your bone growing on the top of the, of the implant. It's like a tempting screw keeping away your your uh, soft tissue away from the top of the implant and in, at the same time keeping this space that we need the space maintainer maintaining to, uh, uh, to to have the bone this space will be filled by by uh, clot the blood clot fibroblast then collagen and then 
you will have a healing, normal healing, as uh, a uh, as a, an extraction site. Now, the question that you can ask me is: Okay, when, once we make an extraction, we have we get a vertical augmentation, vertical uh, loops of, of of the ridge. We will lose this. Why we will not lose it? If you put this uh, screw, why we will not lose this as if as if we make extraction? Two reasons. Here you don't have you don't have ligaments. This is the first reason. So you are not you are not changing the morphology. The second reason, which is important, why we lose this the height vertical height and before losing the the width. When you make an extraction, we lose immediately immediately the first loss is the vertical, not the the width. Then we lose the width. Why we lose that? Because actually the body. What 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 the body want to do? You want to close this uh, the socket that you did when you make your extraction. In order, if you have you have the bone here and the soft tissue here, the body want to close. Hey, are you seeing me in the video? Yeah, the body want to close. So in order to to make it as fast as possible, he have two solutions. Either he he make growing his soft tissue, which will take him some time to grow from here and from here to close, or he start by resorbing this uh, bone in order to allow the close. This is why we lose this vertical uh, this vertical height of the of the socket once once we extract in order to facilitate this, this closure. But when you are placing this screw and you are making closure, actually you did for the body what he is wanting to do. You did this closure so you, so you didn't have any vertical loss. And this is I want to go back to what Dr. Sharash is doing, uh, which is really brilliant, uh, <clears throat> when he makes an extraction in the molar side and he places uh, the, the implant without making any graft and he put the abutment and he make uh, he shape his, his composite on, on, on it to, to hold this soft tissue. Actually, he's not holding only the soft tissue, he's holding also the bone because he is he's closing this uh, socket. He is doing for the body what the body wanted to do. The body wants to close the socket, and he's closing it for it, for the body. So he is maintaining this height of the bone, and this is what what, what is important in that. Uh, let me see, let us see this with with this uh, uh, with some clinical cases. The implant is placed one millimeter under the bone level. We we put here uh, our our uh, uh, screw. The screw is having the same diameter as the implant, but here we can see this difference of diameter because of the axis of the camera. Um, and we fill this gap with bone uh, particles. And then two months later, when we open, we can see the bone is covering the implant on the top of the implant. Nowadays, I never place an implant without the screw. I place my implant one millimeter on the bone level. I take, I, I use this, I do not use any more of the screw that comes with the, the cover screw that comes with the implant. I use the screw that touches the, the bone around and I will have bone on the top of my implant. Let us see this in a, in a, in a last case, in a video. Uh, I was planning to make the implant for this patient. I was here, here, what I'm touching is the nose here. Uh, I wanted to take this bone part to, to use it for the graft, but fortunately, actually, I didn't do it at the end because I, I thought that uh, it's not a big big part here of the bone and and I will uh, lose some maybe some aesthetic. So I I said to myself, okay, I will place the bone here. You see, almost all the implant is out of the bone. I will put the bone and I make my graft. I a big put defect. Here, yeah, yeah, very big defect. Huh? And I put my uh, my screws, uh, the GF zero. I put membranes. Uh, the membranes that I put them is not always to, for uh, in order to have the stability because the stability I have it with the MPN and it's it's, it's much it's enough. But I put these membranes to uh, to reduce uh, the invagination of soft tissue fibroblast inside my graft inside my bone. Um, this is why I prefer the, the PTF membrane, the, the non resorbable one. Because it is uh, more resolvable, so uh, th there will be no invagination of soft tissue until the end of my graft, until the, until I take them out. While these membranes that are resorbable, you may have find you may find sometimes when you open some soft tissue invading your your your, your graft. 
But the inconvenient of the PDF membrane is that you need to make a new, uh, another re-entry to take this, this membrane out, while these membranes you don't need, need it. So in case of replace the implant, the implant and, in the, and the membrane in the same time, you don't need to, you, I prefer to use the collagen membrane. If I'm not placing the implant, I will use uh, PTFE for sure. Because anyway, I have a second surgery to do, so I will do it and I will take out my, uh, uh, my PTFE membrane. So we place the implant, we put my, my, the, the graft, and we put the, the uh, membrane, the, do you remember how, who was it, the defect? How was the defect? Yes. Uh, you, you remember that? Yes, I can. Yes, okay. I know this case very well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the defect. How was it? And I will show you the result of, of this case. Here is the result, the bone that I get after my, uh, my surgery. And even the bone, the bone is on the top of it. And this is the case finished. And I wish you I wish that you uh, have always hope. Do not lose hope. Uh, stay safe and stay home, and everything will go okay. Always, always uh, impressive to me. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohammed. I know that this is the second time you repeat the lecture, yeah. but uh, the, we, we were having a many request to to tell this lecture in English. Uh, I hope that we deliver our message. I hope we all stick to the hope because we have nothing except hope right now. I hope we can see you uh, physical again. And uh, yeah. I wish you a uh, uh, safe stay at home. Thank you. Just, I, night. just I forgot to, to say something. Uh, there is some, uh, there's a picture here in the lecture about so when I show the picture from uh, don't block particles. One of these pictures is, uh, is for my friend Bilal Omarji. Uh, ah. Yeah, I just uh, just to be honest with you, tell that because I forgot to put his name on it, and I was thinking to myself, I, I will tell it. I forgot to tell it, so I am just uh, making it clear. Okay, thank you, Dr. Muhammad. You are always uh, uh, honest in this scientific content. Thank you. I appreciate your effort. A lot of people here they are telling you, "Hello, Dr. Muhammad." A lot of I can see a lot of hearts here. A lot of uh, say hi. So oh, thank, you. Uh, thank you. You can follow them, <laughs> and hopefully we can see you soon. Have a good night, Dr. Muhammad. Thank you. You too. Have a good night. Goodbye. Yeah.